The shock of the assassination was profound. It just unleashed a tremendous outpouring of grief. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're examining 20 infamous assassinations. As the Archduke is laid to rest, shock is turning to anger. For this list, we'll be looking at notorious slayings of public figures throughout history that left a mark in the history books. Which assassination affected you the most? Let us know below. Robert F. Kennedy in June 1968, New York Senator Robert F. Kennedy was running for the Democrat presidential nomination. Having won the primaries in California and South Dakota, Kennedy was at the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles to deliver a late-night speech. His supporters were electric. Perhaps they were looking at the next president of the United States. My thanks to all of you, and now it's on to Chicago, and let's win there. Afterward, he went through the kitchen to the press room and met with several hotel employees. Here, Palestinian-born Sirhan Sirhan took his opportunity. He believed Kennedy supported Israel in suppressing his home nation. As the candidate shook hands, Sirhan opened fire, hitting Kennedy several times and injuring five others before he was restrained. He turned to the right toward the kitchen. When he did come through, uh, lots of television cameras and stuff, and we were going into a press conference. He was shaking hands with the, uh, the two busboys talking with him, and it was at that time that the the shots started. Even as he lost consciousness, Kennedy checked if everyone was okay. He later succumbed to his injuries. Sirhan was handed a life sentence for his grim actions. Alexander Litvinenko Alexander Litvinenko was a Russian Federal Security Service officer specializing in organized crime. But when he and his team publicly spoke about order to assassinate Boris Berezovsky, Litvinenko fell out of favor and was accused of several crimes. As far as the Russian state was concerned, Alexander Litvinenko was an agent who'd gone rogue. At this press conference in Moscow, he accused the Russian security forces of corruption. In 2000, he moved to the UK and was granted asylum, working with their security forces regarding Russia. In November 2006, Litvinenko was admitted to the hospital after falling ill. After tests, they realized he had fatal radiation poisoning from polonium-210. We're in the unusual position of having what you could describe as a living murder victim telling us about how it was that he came to believe that he was uh, meeting his death. Leading up to this, Litvinenko had met with several security officers, including two Russians. Three weeks after admittance, Litvinenko passed away. In 2016, a UK inquiry into the case concluded that the assassination was quote-unquote probably approved by Russian President Vladimir Putin. William McKinley After a successful first term as President of the United States after winning the 1898 Spanish-American War and moving the country out of financial depression, in September 1901, William McKinley was enjoying his second stint as he met with the public at the Temple of Music, Buffalo, New York. However, one of the people eagerly waiting to meet the president was anarchist Leon Sholgosh, who hid a revolver under a handkerchief. As McKinley went to shake Sholgosh's hand, he shot the president multiple times. A mob descended on Sholgosh. However, McKinley called them off before he received medical attention. Within a week, the president passed away from gangrene. Sholgosh was convicted of murder and was executed in October 1901. He was quickly convicted of murder, and on October 29th in Auburn, New York, was given the electric chair. Yitzhak Rabin. After serving as Prime Minister of Israel in 1974, Yitzhak Rabin returned to the job in 1992 for a second term. Immediately, he pushed ahead with a peace deal between his country and Palestine. And some took exception to this, including extremist Yigal Amir. There's a really ugly character to it. The level of vitriol, the anger, the scope of these demonstrations, the kind of incitement. In November 1995, Rabin was at a peace rally to support the Oslo Accords. Afterward, as he went to his car, Amir appeared behind Rabin and fired at him multiple times before the prime minister's bodyguards could stop the attack. While Amir was detained, Rabin was rushed to emergency surgery but sadly lost his life. The Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, the architect of the Middle East peace process, has been assassinated. In 1996, Amir was sentenced to life imprisonment for the assassination, six years for injuring one of Rabin's bodyguards and eight years for conspiracy. Grigory Rasputin After meeting Nicholas II of Russia and Alexandra Fyodorovna in 1905, Grigory Rasputin became a faith healer for their son Alexei Nikolaevich. It became known just how much influence he had at the royal court, that he had the ear of the Tsarina herself, and that a word from Rasputin in those ears could achieve just about anything that you desired. And Rasputin's rapid rise in the Tsar circle greatly concerned some aristocrats like Dmitry Pavlovich and Felix Yusupov, who wrote a legendary account of the night they assassinated the man nicknamed the Mad Monk. According to Yusupov, Rasputin was brought to Moika Palace in St. Petersburg in December 1916. 
after Rasputin seemingly survived poison-laced cakes and wine, Yusupov fired at him. According to Yusupov, the massive doses of poison had no effect. He started to believe that Rasputin was being protected by demonic forces. Panicking, he ran back upstairs, borrowed a revolver, and returned to confront him. Once the duo took care of an alibi and returned, Rasputin sprung to life and attacked before Porishkovich shot him again and threw his body into the river. According to historians, this tale is disputed and evidence suggests Rasputin was only shot. Indira Gandhi In October 1984, India's first woman prime minister, Indira Gandhi, was residing at her home in New Delhi. While working through the gardens, two of her bodyguards, Beyant Singh and Satwant Singh, opened fire and slew Gandhi before surrendering. Mrs. Gandhi was apparently shot at her home in New Delhi by two members of her own security guard. While Beyant was slain immediately, Satwant was captured and later executed for his actions. The two had seemingly done this as revenge for Gandhi ordering Operation Blue Star, a mission to remove Sikh extremists from the Golden Temple. And angered the Sikh population by her handling of Sikh violence in Punjab. Government troops besieged the Golden Temple, the Sikhs' holiest place of worship. Mrs. Gandhi's government said the siege was necessary to root out Sikh extremists. Her son Rajiv Gandhi took over as prime minister until 1989. In 1991, as he campaigned, an explosive planted by the militant group the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Ilam detonated, slaying Gandhi, one LTTE member and 14 other people. Leon Trotsky Having been an instigator in the Russian Revolution before going into exile when Joseph Stalin took power, Leon Trotsky lived on borrowed time in August 1940 at his compound in Mexico City, Mexico. Abroad, his number one enemy, Leon Trotsky, was still alive. Europe, in general, has ceased to be the center of the world. Only a few months prior, he survived an elaborate assassination attempt by Stalin's agents. When Frank Jackson, a confidant, invited Trotsky to examine some documents, he was taken by surprise when Jackson attacked with an ice pick. While he was reading the article, Ramon Makada took out from his pocket an ice pick, he lifted it up in his two hands, and he brought it down on the back of Trotsky's head. With grievous injuries, Trotsky held off Jackson until his security arrived, then made sure they didn't fatally retaliate against his assailant. Trotsky later succumbed to his severe wounds. Jackson was actually Ramon Mercader, an agent for the Soviet Union's NKVD, who was sentenced to 20 years for murder. Philip II of Macedon Philip II of Macedon, also known as Macedonia, became king of the country in 359 BCE and later took over Greece. Philip was a man of war whose life was spent conquering new territories and overrunning the city-states of Greece. With a talent for military strategy and implementing new technology, Philip turned his nation into a powerhouse on the battlefield. Arriving at the theater in the ancient capital city of Aegea in 336 BCE to celebrate his daughter's marriage, Philip was approached by his bodyguard, Pausanias of Erastus, in public, who fatally stabbed the monarch before running away only to fall and be slain by guards. While some speculate that Alexander the Great orchestrated his father's murder, it's believed Pausanias, who was Philip's lover, was motivated by jealousy over a rival and a lack of respect from the monarch. James Garfield While most Americans were excited and surprised that underdog James Garfield had been elected president, one person was not, Charles Guiteau. He believed that his speech had been the turning point in Garfield's campaign, even though it wasn't. Convinced that he, too, had played a key role in getting the president elected, Charles Guiteau had decided on the appropriate payment. He was going to be the next consul to Paris. Guiteau spent months unsuccessfully lobbying for a consulship. By July 1881, he ran out of patience. The delusional Guiteau purchased a firearm and sought revenge against Garfield. After giving up many times, he eventually found the president at a train station in Washington, D.C. and fired at Garfield twice. As Guiteau left, he walked into a cop who arrested him. While Garfield survived, the subpar medical treatment by today's standards led to an infection and his passing in September. Guiteau was executed in June 1882. Shinzo Abe Having been Japan's longest serving prime minister in history, in July 2022, Shinzo Abe was campaigning outside the Yamato Saidaiji station in Nara City, Nara Prefecture. Shinzo Abe was giving a political speech to a small crowd when a shot rang out behind him. In the years prior, Abe's relationship with the controversial Unification Church had strengthened. Some believe the group to be a dangerous cult, and one of them is Tetsuya Yamagami, whose mother was a member and donated the family money to them until they were destitute. He believed Abe had close ties with a religious group formerly known as the Unification Church. He says his mother donated large sums of money to the group, which left his family in financial ruin. As Abe delivered a speech, Yamagami fired multiple times from a homemade firearm at the former prime minister. While Abe was rushed to the hospital, he didn't make it. 
Yamagami gave himself up immediately at the scene. In January 2023, he was charged with Abe's murder and is awaiting a trial. John Lennon In December 1980, Mark David Chapman, a massive Beatles fan, stood outside the apartment complex of the Dakota in New York City waiting to see John Lennon. While he got an autograph from the musician, Chapman had something else in mind. And he looked at me, as I mentioned earlier, he said, is that all? Do you want anything else? And I felt uh, then and now that he knew something subconsciously. After taking offense to Lennon's words that the Beatles were more popular than Jesus, and with an obsession with the novel The Catcher in the Rye, Chapman believed the musician was a hypocrite. When Lennon returned to the Dakota that night, he seemingly recognized the fan as he approached the entrance. Chapman fatally shot Lennon multiple times from behind and then gave himself up. Police had found him minutes after the shooting, waiting for them quietly at the scene of the crime. In 1981, Chapman was sentenced to 20 years to life. His parole has been denied 12 times so far. Harvey Milk Having developed a reputation as a pioneering openly gay politician and an LGBTQIA activist, Harvey Milk became a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in January 1978. I will fight to represent my constituents. I will fight to represent the city and county of San Francisco. I will fight to give those people who had once walked away hope so that those people will walk back in. By November, his co-worker and rival Dan White resigned from his position. But when he tried to take it back from Mayor George Moscone, it was denied, and he was told he wouldn't be reappointed. With that, White fatally shot Moscone. He then went into Milk's office and fired at him multiple times before running away, then later handing himself in. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. White was convicted on the lesser charge of voluntary manslaughter after arguing diminished responsibility due to depression. He was released five years into his seven-year sentence, but took his own life in 1985. Malcolm X. After growing in popularity under the Nation of Islam and becoming a leading figure in civil rights, Malcolm X left them in 1964 after a disagreement in policy. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being. Allegedly, the group had marked him. In February 1965, Malcolm was set to speak at the Abaddon Ballroom in Manhattan, New York. But after a disturbance in the crowd distracted Malcolm and his security, three people got on stage and fatally shot the activist. He walked out onto the stage, then a man stepped up 15 feet from the stage. He crouched, took perfect aim, and blasted right through the lectern into Malcolm's heart. One of the assassins, Mujahid Halim, was beaten by the enraged crowd while the other two got away. Later, Khalil Islam and Muhammad Abdul Aziz were accused of being responsible. Islam, Halim, and Aziz received sentences of 20 years to life. However, in 2021, Islam and Aziz were exonerated after their wrongful convictions. Benazir Bhutto In October 2007, the first woman prime minister in a Muslim country, Benazir Bhutto, returned to Pakistan after exile to take part in the election after facing years of allegations of corruption. On the campaign trail was the former prime minister, Benazir Bhutto, a controversial figure, loved by many, loathed by others for her outspoken views. This made her a target for extremists. Immediately, an attempt on Bhutto's life happened with an explosive in Karsas. While Bhutto was unharmed, 180 people perished and hundreds were injured. In December, while campaigning in Rawalpindi, militants shot at Bhutto, then detonated another explosive. This time, the former prime minister didn't survive, and neither did many others. This is Liaquat Bagh, where Benazir Bhutto was assassinated. Her supporters are commemorating her life here and her place in the history books. This sparked a reign of violence across the country as people were outraged. In 2008, Bhutto's husband, Asif Ali Zardari, was elected president of Pakistan. Abraham Lincoln. With the Confederacy struggling against the Union during the American Civil War in April 1865, sympathizer and well-known actor John Wilkes Booth hatched a plan. As President Abraham Lincoln watched a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C., Wilkes broke into the box and fatally shot him before escaping. Officers soon tracked Wilkes down at a barn in Virginia with accomplice David Herald. After setting the building on fire and a shootout, Booth was slain while Herald surrendered. He, along with co-conspirators Mary Surratt, Lewis Powell, who failed to assassinate William Seward, and George Atzerod, who was assigned to take out Andrew Johnson but was unable to, were all executed for their involvement, while several others received prison sentences. Booth tried to shoot his way out, but was shot in the neck. He died a few hours later. Soon after, four of his co-conspirators were hanged. Julius Caesar Seeing Julius Caesar being declared dictator for life, his senators began to hatch a plan. 
They had grown resentful of Caesar's popularity after his many successes in expanding the Republic, and according to some, he'd considered morphing into the King of Rome. Julius Caesar was 56 years old. After disregarding the niceties of Roman democracy, he was now a king in all but name. Seeing the potential of their power vanishing as the Senate met on the Ides of March 44 BCE in the theater of Pompey, Rome, the politicians attacked Caesar and stabbed him 23 times. Someone else stabbed him in the side. This was to prove the killer blow. But by then, all 23 plotters were hacking and stabbing in such a frenzy that some of them even stabbed each other. Up to 70 senators are believed to have been involved in the conspiracy, including, and infamously, Caesar's close friend, Marcus Junius Brutus. Instead of being celebrated by the people, the senators were hated for their dark deed, causing civil wars to ignite. Martin Luther King Jr. While he's considered one of the most important figures in the U.S. civil rights movement, some had an issue with Martin Luther King Jr.'s dreams of challenging the establishment for equality. Some of the values that presently exist are certainly out of line with the uh, values and the idealistic structure uh, that brought our nation into being. Unfortunately, we haven't been true to these ideals. In April 1968, King was at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee, to support a worker strike. As he stood on the balcony, a sniper bullet fatally wounded him. People were angry at this atrocity, causing riots all over the country. The authorities claimed that James Earl Ray was responsible and he pleaded guilty to the crime. However, he withdrew the confession after being sentenced to 99 years and disclosed allegations of conspiracy. By 1976, Ray was back to pushing his conspiracy theories to get a new trial. He said he was framed and had information that proved the FBI killed Dr. King. A 1999 civil trial blamed Lloyd Jowers, police officer Earl Clark, and various governmental agencies for King's assassination. John F. Kennedy. In November 1963, U.S. President John F. Kennedy and First Lady Jacqueline traveled in an open-top convertible through Dallas, Texas. That tragic trip through Dealey Plaza, the first couple riding through that windy road in Dallas in a Lincoln Continental. Shortly after passing the Texas School Book Depository Building, several shots were fired, fatally hitting Kennedy and injuring Texas Governor John Connolly. Seeing his mission done, former Marine Lee Harvey Oswald departed the scene. However, after being arrested, Oswald killed Officer J.D. Tippett before escaping, but was soon rearrested. Days later, as he was being transferred from the Dallas police headquarters, Jack Ruby, apparently in grief over JFK's demise, publicly assassinated Oswald. As he's being brought out in front of the TV cameras, Jack Ruby, owner of a local nightclub, steps out of the crowd with a 45 and shoots Oswald once in the stomach on national TV. While awaiting a retrial, Ruby died from cancer in 1967. The Warren Commission, which ended in 1964, stated Oswald acted alone in slaying the president. Mahatma Gandhi. Having returned to his home nation of India as a civil rights leader with his nonviolent methods, Mahatma Gandhi became a figurehead in securing independence from British rule. It was a first step towards India's independence from British rule. Gandhi began to travel, demanding independence for India. He held peaceful protests, willingly went to prison, and even staged hunger strikes against laws that he felt were unjust. In 1947, Britain split the country in two, creating India and Pakistan, nations for Hindus and Muslims, respectively. However, this partition was ill-conceived and left millions displaced, causing violent riots and costing many lives. Gandhi went on a campaign to seek the end of the brutality. Nataram Godse, a Hindu nationalist, and his co-conspirators believed the iconic figure was destroying India. While in New Delhi in January 1948, Godse fatally shot Gandhi, then gave himself up immediately. He took three steps, bowed before Mahatma Gandhi, and he shot him point blank, three bullets. In 1949, Godse and Narayan Apte were executed for their actions, while others involved were imprisoned. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. In June 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, drove to the hospital in Sarajevo, the then Austro-Hungarian province of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They planned to check on those injured by a grenade that was meant for the royal couple. Instead, after going down the wrong street, teenager Gavrilo Princip saw his chance. It makes headlines across the world. The assassin belongs to a group backed by neighboring Serbia. The Bosnian Serb revolutionary fatally fired at Ferdinand and Sophie. 
Princip was later sentenced to prison due to his age, while his co-conspirators were imprisoned or executed. This slaying was the final straw that caused Austria-Hungary to declare war on Serbia. Austria-Hungary sets out to punish Serbia. It wants to quash support for Serbian nationalism. This forced many nations to pick sides to begin World War I, which caused an estimated 40 million people to perish. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.